Hi guys, it's Isa. Today I'm going to show you how to do a basic repotting of uh, an arrangement that you would purchase at Home Depot or Lowe's or some such place. So here's my arrangement. It's in a plastic nursery pot. It has three plants in it that are in okay shape. Uh, this is a Graptopetalum pentandrum superbum, a variegated jade, and a um, sedum uh, golden stone crop. The dirt in the pot is relatively dry, which is good. Oftentimes these guys are overwatered and rotting. Uh, you generally want to wait until it's pretty dry before you repot. It's always good to repot from dry soil to dry soil. Um, we're going to um, take the plants out of the pot first, clean them up a little bit, and then we'll get into the type of pot and the part of growing medium uh, that I use. So, in order to get it out of the pot, you're going to press the pot a little bit. And again, when the soil is dry, this will come out really easily. Kind of tilt the plants like so, and very gently remove them from the pot. You can see that there's some roots stuck on the bottom of the pot. It's okay to break some roots. Uh, don't worry about it too much. So this is kind of the dirt that came with the plants from the nursery. I am going to pot each of these plants separately. So I am going to take them out of this dirt. Also, you want to take them out of this dirt. You don't know what has been in it, whether it has any uh, paras like any bugs or any pests or anything like that. Uh, you want to put them in your own potting medium. So you want to work gently in order not to uh, mess up the roots. Uh, good for this stuff is just regular chopsticks. So work gently and patiently if you can. So here's one little guy. I will pot this one later. Here's the agrapsipetalum that I will be repotting for purposes of this video. And here is the jade, which I will also be repotting a little bit later. You can see this is the guy with the crazy long roots. So I'll set these guys aside. I'll deal with him with them later. And we will work with our little uh, guy over here. So first of all, I'm kind of going to look at the plant. Uh, looks pretty healthy, especially for like a Home Depot little plant. I check if the leaves are firm. I try not to touch the leaves from the top uh, just to avoid fingerprints. There's a leaf here that I'm going to detach. Um, it's kind of soft. It's a clean break, so technically I could propagate this leaf. I'm probably not going to, but I'll set it aside for now. So here's the root ball. Uh, you can see that this guy grew from a cutting because it's it's kind of uh, curved. Um, and then it has roots. The main root ball's over here. It has some roots here. I am going to try to leave his uh, root system intact. What I'm going to do is use my chopstick to kind of shake out some more of this old dirt. Like so. The roots are pretty dry. If the roots are wet, um, that's the danger of repotting wet things because inevitably you will have a little break that can get infected uh, when you repot it. Another good reason not to water your plant right after you repot it. But I think this guy is doing fine. Not going to do much more to him. Don't want to be too distracted. Uh, too... Um, destructive towards him sorry uh, so I'm gonna leave him the way he is don't want to rip off any roots or anything so now I'm going to prepare um, the potting medium as far as the container I like to use clay terracotta pots not glazed or anything for breathability inside I put a little screen uh, what I do is I buy this at Home Depot it's like uh, um, it's called screen mend it comes uh, in sheets, and this is something that you'd use to repair your window screen. I, um, I wash it to kind of rub off this sticky coating that it has, and then I just have a little screen left over. So I put this in here, and that way the dirt won't fall out the bottom of the pot. Always make sure that your pot has a drainage hole. When you water succulents, you want to water all the way through until the water drains out of the hole. Um, so that's very important. Now, my potting medium... I use um, two-thirds of regular um, cactus and uh, succulent mix. Uh, I think this is miracle Grow, And then I use uh, one-third of diatomaceous uh, soil amendment, diatomaceous earth. 
The brand I use is Axis DE. I'll link it below. Uh, it's basically a porous mineral uh, that is used for additional aeration um, in the soil. A lot of folks use pumice. I think that's a great idea. Pumice is kind of hard to come by. So is this stuff. I bought this online. So without further ado, this is already pre-mixed. Uh, what I do is uh, I would pour the soil in here and then I would pull the soil amendment. I would uh, put the Tupperware lid on it and just shake the heck out of it really well. So you can see that it's fairly mixed. So I'm just going to fill this pot. Uh, you don't want to go too much up in pot size. I actually should be using a smaller pot and I'm not. Um, you don't want to give this guy too much of a shock. But. So you kind of fill it up to the point where you want him to sit. The way you want to plant him is sort of right here. So you can fill this up quite a bit before you start filling in around him. Um, the most important thing is not to bury any of the leaves because they will rot. So you can pretty much bury up to here or so. These are a little rosette. So I'll put a few more spoons of soil here. So then what I want to do is I kind of want his roots to be nice and spread in the soil. And this, it's hard for me when I'm making arrangements, which is why I don't make succulent arrangements a lot. You can see I'm holding him right under the rosette and I am placing um, the part that I want the soil to go to right level with the pot. What I'm going to do now is start filling in the soil while I'm holding him here so that the roots are uniformly spread and covered in the pot. I'm going to keep using this bigger spoon and this is just like a measuring spoon for as long as I can. I also have a smaller spoon, as you can see. So this is the part that takes a while. I don't wanna bore you guys to pieces. But you can obviously like fill up the whole pot and then make a hole and squeeze them in there. There's many ways. I just like it if I can to, um, to just be very generous and tender with the roots. So you're going to make a mess. I would normally do this in the basement on my uh, workbench, but it's pretty dark in there. So I'm up here in my kitchen. My friend is being nice enough to film me. So periodically what you want to do is you want to tap the pot so that the dirt gets, gets in there and all the way. You don't want to leave any air pockets or anything like that. And that's why periodically you want to stop and tap so that the dirt settles. So pretty much what I'm doing is just um, putting dirt on the roots, tapping it. It gets in between the roots. And I am going to keep going. Ah, we'll clean that up later. Until the guy is good and buried in there properly. Periodically, once I get higher up, I'm going to kind of tap it down a little. But for now, I'm mainly filling it up, making a mess, rushing. Tap again. Turn them a little. And most folks don't baby things the way I do. I am one of those people that needs to have everything planted in a separate pot with great care and control. So you can see that he's beginning to stand up on his own, which is good news. You don't want to start pressing down on the soil too quickly because then he will go in deeper and you want him to be level with the surface. So guys, this is my first, um, I'm going to call this my first action video. I made three other videos, which are just like plant tours. And uh, I didn't have to do anything, just kind of talk. So pardon me if I'm a little bit nervous here. Ah, come here. So especially if you're repotting echeverias or very plants that are very low to the ground and have leaves that you can get stuff on like I'm doing right now, you can use a smaller spoon. It'll take longer, but you'll be more precise be able to place the dirt more where you want it to go. You will not get dirt on your plant. 
because many plants, especially the ones with the powdery coating, the farina, you will leave nasty fingerprints if you mess with them too much while you're repotting them. Yeah. Almost there, guys. Isn't this exciting? So I'm going to tell you real quick as I finish this up how you water a succulent. Uh, so the normal watering technique, which most folks stand by, is again, have a pot with a drainage hole. After you repot, give it, oh, about, I don't know, three days or so without watering. Uh, more if your uh, plant was wet when you repotted it. This prevents uh, risk of um, the roots getting infected if, if I broke any of the roots or anything like that. Water is just asking for disaster in such cases. So then when you water, you're going to water, as I mentioned, all the way until the water goes through the drainage hole on the bottom. It can pour out generously. Then what you're going to do is you have to wait for the plant to completely dry out before watering it again. And it will normally not happen um, sooner than one week. So about one week's time, you want to stick a chopstick into the pot, all the way to the bottom of the pot in maybe like one or two places. If your chopstick uh, comes up kind of wet with dirt stuck to it, hold off and don't water. If it comes up dry, maybe wait one more day or two more days and then water. Succulents rarely buy, die from underwatering, they die from overwatering. Okay, so now I'm gonna press down on the dirt. I didn't want to do it sooner because I didn't want to, like I said, pack this guy down too low in the pot because now he's going to settle. The roots are going to settle. So I'm just kind of gently going um, in case you're concerned that you're going to break something. You can use a little spoon. Some people use uh, chopsticks to do this. Again, personal preference. So it's really up to you whether you want to uh, fill it up with more soil. I find that when you water, the soil packs and settles and you end up with less. So you can always top it off after you water. So it's not the end. Um, they grow, they're alive, they're plants, they are not static. All right, pack it down in there one more time. For now, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to take